Hey, what's up everyone? It's Duncan and Ajani from Overland Journals. Hi everyone. And today's video is a trip report on our recent trip to the Clare Valley. Welcome back everyone. So what we try to do is every time we go on a trip and come back, we do a trip report. Now the whole idea behind this trip report is to share information with anybody else who might be planning a trip to that part of South Australia that we've traveled to or anywhere else for that matter. So we share information um, that we feel might be useful to you. So today's one we're going to run down through on our recent trip to the Clare Valley. Now, if you're new to this channel, please hit, hit that subscription button and the notification bell because our channel is all about sharing our experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community. And we bring out a video every single week. At the end of this video, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, please, please leave them in the comments below. Back in July, we did a trip to the Southern Flinders Ranges. And on the way, we stopped in Clare Valley for about, what, four days? Four, uh, three days. Yeah. Three days. Three we days, yeah. stopped for three days. Wish, wish we had stayed longer. And we explored that region. So today's video, I'm going to talk about how to get there, what we would recommend in terms of routes to consider. Because if you're coming from interstate and you're heading towards Flinders Ranges, then the Clare Valley is definitely a must. And then we'll talk about... Clare Valley itself, and then the historic town of Borough. So getting there from Adelaide, uh, there are two different routes you can take. One through, take the highway up to Port Augusta and then cut across into the Clare Valley. Um, or you can take the scenic route, that's what we did. That's through the uh, wine regions of Barossa and Clare. And, and that's a beautiful drive. It's a bit slower than the, uh, the, the highway through Port Augusta, but you get to see so much. Took us about four hours, I think, yeah? Yeah, well, the way we were traveling. Yeah, the way we travel, <laughs> because we stop, we take pictures, we do wine tasting, and uh, we do videoing for the travel films. So it took us a lot longer, but. But usually about. Uh, three hours, three the hours, most. Yeah. Three hours, the most you can get there, because it's only 200 odd kilometers. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's an easy drive from Adelaide, that is. So let's start with the Clare Valley. Now what we did was we stayed in a town called, a little farming town called Feral Flat. Now that's smack in the middle between Clare, the town of Clare and the town of Burra. So because we wanted to see both places, we picked this particular location, which is smack in the middle because 20 kilometers to the town of Clay and about 20 or 20, 21 kilometers to the town of Burra. That's what we did. Now, of course, there are plenty of places to stay in the in Clay Clare town itself. itself. Yeah. Yep. Uh, in Feral Flat is, is a bit limited as far as we... And I think we wanted to experience something different as well like yeah um, yeah feral flat was brilliant and we would probably do it again if we went that route because it's smack in the little, middle of a little farming town um there's only two b and b's as far as yeah. we know we stayed in one of them and we practically had the whole place to ourselves yeah, so it, was, it used to be a uh, one of the farm um, Yes, Little yeah, shops. so, yeah, where we stayed, it was, it used to be a, um, farm, shop. a farm shop farm back shop. back in the 1800s. Yeah. And over the years, you know, it's kind of changed uh, what it, the purpose it, it served. And today it's basically a, a B&B run by the owners of the building. Really current nice owners. couple, the current owners. Yeah, really beautiful couple. The breakfasts were like awesome. I'll, I'll leave links below to the place where we stayed if you want to check it out. Yeah. But and they, they do make their own jams and chutneys and things like that too. So yeah, the, and that's yeah. what we get got for breakfast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and fruits from their own orchard. So, yeah, yeah it was awesome. When we, when we first booked the place, we didn't know any of that. For us, it was just that convenience of 20 kilometers to Clay and then 20 kilometers to Buran. That's all we looked at. But once we got there, we were you know, even more pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Now, the Clay town itself, it's a nice little town. You get all sorts of uh, you know, supplies you can get. There's a uh, supermarket, uh, one or two supermarkets. Yeah. Um, if you watched my previous video, we had a problem with our uh, 
auxiliary battery going flat and thankfully one place had one battery which saved the day for us. Uh, so if you want to, you know, replenish, you know, get groceries and stock up, you know, it's you got plenty in there. A few nice restaurants as well. Yes, yeah. a few nice restaurants, a um, couple of historic pubs as well. And I will come to historic pubs in a moment. But in Clare Town itself, you get a, quite a few good historic pubs you could try if you like that kind it's, of food. It's a very small town, yeah. but you, you get everything pretty, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, pretty everything. much. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, from Clare Town, before we get to the main attraction, which is wine tasting, which someone here really enjoyed. What do you mean, me? <laughs> you, I, I drove. I had yeah, to do the driving. You did all the drinking. Anyway, so uh, what you can do is also, if you drive westwards from the town of Clare, about 40-odd kilometers, you come to the Pink Lake. It's known as the Pink Lake, but the real name is Lake Bambanga. Again, the, the video playlist, it's in the playlist. Go check it out. So you can take the drive up 40 kilometers. You can see the Pink Lake for yourself. And then come back into town. Uh, you know, that's a bit of a half a day drive if you want to make a you know a, a relaxed trip of it. But once you get into Clare, Clare itself, the Clare Valley, there's so many little boutique wineries you can visit. And if wine tasting is something you enjoy, then there's quite a lot you can do. Yeah. And something we picked up. We, we are by no means no. wine <laughs> connoisseurs. We don't. We just drink to get drunk. But um, one thing we noticed was because of the soil conditions, um, different parts of the Clare Valley will give you different tastes to the wine. Mm. So the initial set of wines that we try or wineries we we, we went to. Yeah, um, that was more. I forget the area. It's more like if you took Clare Valley more to the north, it was more um, sort it of... It had a chemical sort of... Like uh, a metallic, metallic taste. taste yeah. Okay, Again, we're not experts, but it's just what we tasted. Probably the wrong word. But probably if... the wrong word to use, but uh, that's the kind of taste we got. But when we went further down south of the region, it was a completely different taste. So what we're trying to say here is, if you love wine and, and, and wine tasting and so on, don't just go to one area of the Clare Valley. Try and do the whole region or at least pick. There's so many to choose from. If you go to the information center, you get all the wineries that you can go in and visit. Go and try from different regions, different parts of the valley. And one of the, the wineries, the owner was there, the winemaker was there. So it was really nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hang on a second. I got to bring something. Stay there. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Okay, there is a, a very well-known Australian artist called Howard Williams. Howard Williams, yes. Yes, Howard Williams. If you go and Google search on his you know, paintings and you know, very quirky kind of paintings that will come up. Beautiful paintings. Beautiful and Colors we love them. awesome. We um, just love his paintings. And, and uh, yeah, I think one of those up there is no. Howard Williams, I think. And we've got a few in the house. Oh, anyway. Go and do a Google search and, and you that his paintings will come up. Yeah. Very quirky, like I said, we love them. Sense and of humor. The we sense of humor them. is brilliant. Yeah. Anyway, so we drove into this winery called Mintaro Winery. It's a very little boutique winery. And when we got there, it turned out, thankfully for us, we, the, we met the owner of the place. And he turned out to be a really good friend of Howard, um, Howard really? Williams. Yeah. <laughs> And he's got a range of wines where the label is Howard Williams paintings. So we, we're yet to still open this bottle because we feel we don't want to open it. But it's a what we, you can collect this um, the whole range if you wanted to. I think we just purely bought it because of the the artwork. <laughs> yeah, we love the artwork. So yeah. as you can see, it's um, so that's one of the reasons we bought this bottle and, yeah. and a few more. Um, and I think even once we finish this bottle, we'll probably keep the bottle yeah. uh, once we finish the wine inside. So, yeah, that's the thing. So if you love wine, then there, there is a place, you know, you can spend a lot of time. And ideally, we would say spend a whole day because at the end of the day, you're on a holiday uh, and you want to make the best of it and savor the whole region. So one whole day in the Clare, is some, in Clare Valley is what we would recommend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now to the historic town of Burra. Now, before we get to Burra, if, if you, at the end of this video, if you've got any questions relating to this trip report, 
if or you want to get more information if you're planning a trip that way you know leave them in the comments below or write to us at duncan at overlandjournals.com we're happy to share information with you okay historic town of barada that Bara is a historic copper mining town that existed where the mining took place between mid 1800s to early 1900s and then everybody sort of rushed over to victoria because they found gold there but there's a lot of history there if you you know if you if if you have the history buff and ideally we would recommend a full day yeah full day full yeah. day to see if you're going if, to all the sites yeah if you're going to all the sites then an entire day would be you know brilliant that's what we did we spent a whole day so what you need to do is once you get into the town of bara go into the information center now, at the information center they're super helpful they'll give you all the information that you would possibly need um a good detailed map yeah. and also a lot of the sites are you need an access key so you get the key from the information center they do charge you a key deposit which gets refunded to you at the end of the day the information center closes at 5 o'clock but don't let that worry you yeah. because the sites that you're going to because you got the key you can you know stay longer than 5 o'clock once you get back if the information center happens to be closed then go across the road to the shell servo yeah. they will take the key and give you refund your money back so it still works so it's pretty good really there are a number of sites of significance you can see in the bara region so to give you a bit of a, a sort of an overview so there was the mine where the mining took place and around the mine there was a, there are points of significance that It's worth seeing. So, for example, there's this one where everybody was provided housing by the those who owned the mines, but then not everyone wanted to stay in those houses. So, what they did was they wanted their own property. So, out in the outskirts of the town of Barab, there was there is the remains of a village that once existed. Um, so, that's you know worthwhile going to see. also it was amazing because in the early days there was such a huge influx of miners you know trying to make a fortune for themselves or to make a living at least and there was a massive housing shortage i think if i remember correctly i think there was at one point there was close to about 1000 mining miners and their families who didn't have any form of housing to stay in so what they did was along the bara creek they dug dug out sort of caves to go and to live in now it's a it's a amazing testament to how to the lengths a human would go to survive and make a better future for themselves and their their families so go take a look at that some of those not all the the caves or the dugouts still remain because over time uh, floods have sort of you know um close them off yeah. however there's about four that's left yeah, that's and you right. can go and see them take with you a, a good powerful torch or a headlamp because you will need then that'll help you to get to see what what was inside so that's one of many places you can go and see mm-hmm. and then what i would i think what i would recommend is go and see all these outlying places so there's a couple of museums as well there's the railway museum go and check them all out and then eventually work your way to the mine itself. Yeah. Well, that's what I did, what we did because then it all kind of comes together. Okay, well, that's where it was and that's what all these other areas kind of meant to the the mining community. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's up to you how you do it, but this is how we did it and so eventually when we drove to the mine itself and Well, I think day, we wanted to spend more time at the mine. Well, itself. that's another thing because yeah, ideally there's so much to see at the mine itself. you um i would say at least 1 hour, hour at least 1 hour cuz there's a lot of walking there's a lot of walking <laughs> true in both places clear valley as well as bara there's a, if you're into cycling if you're into hiking plenty to do there as well well we didn't do any of that because we're not so much into hiking and uh, cycling we're more four wheel driving um again talking of all there's there's no four wheel driving tracks as such because um it's tarmac all the way the blacktop 
So no four wheel driving, but you know we we still enjoyed it. Uh, you can get there in any. Oh, you can get there in a car. Oh yeah, yeah. any ordinary vehicle. Yeah. It's worthwhile seeing, but we just didn't do cycling and hiking. That's what it is. And then to f- finish it all off, if you are a rock fan, particularly an Aussie rock fan, then you n- you must go to the site where Midnight Oil had a cover for their album back in, I think, the 80s that was that a picture of a farmhouse. And the farmhouse still exists. Now, ideally, if you go towards sunset or late afternoon as the sun's dropping, the, these beautiful golden colors paints that entire house and the surrounding meadow with golden light. So if you are if you want to go and see it, I would say go towards late afternoon as the sun is setting. But I think also September and October yes. is a nice, better month Absolutely. because of uh, all the can- canola flowers. Yes, yeah. yeah. So if you plan your trip towards September and yeah, around about September, September. perhaps early, early October, October maybe, but definitely September, that entire field will be stacked with canola Probably, flowers yeah. so it, it that'll be a beautiful site which we didn't get to see because we went back in july well, we wanted to go back <laughs> we wanted to go back well as we record this video we are in towards the end of september, september. it didn't work out but um, yeah we might just make a trip anyway so we'll see how that goes if you are into food then you have to try some of the historic pubs because there's quite a number of them so there are quite a few in the clare town and also in the town of Burrup, and also if you from Clare Town, if you take a radius of about forty kilometers, there's quite a number of other historic pubs that you can visit. We love stopping at these places. It's not just the food; we love food. Big portions. Big portions, yes, <laughs> but also that it's just the history behind these places, and you get to meet the locals, have a chat with the locals, get some insight into what the locals would recommend. So if you take that whole entire experience, we love doing that sort of thing and we try and stop everywhere and of course put on a few kilos as well. So try all those pubs if you enjoy that as well. And then finally, best time of the year to go to that region. Well, the weather is beautiful. So the weather is pretty good throughout the year, if you ask me. And But to give you an idea, summer runs from December to February. And during summer, it's a high of mid thirties. Uh, might be forties as well, isn't it? Um, no, not in the clay. Uh, That's more towards the Flinders. Yeah, yeah, okay. So high of mid thirties and lows of you know uh, sort of fifteen to twenty thereabouts yeah. in summer, and then winter, which is April to August, that can be a little bit colder, but then again, not extremely cold. It'll be sort of like mid twenties. It was cold sometimes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, the early mornings were a bit cold, but oh, but yeah, yeah no. around about highs of like twenty, twenty one, sort of early twenties, and then in the in the evenings and at night it can drop way down to about you know two degrees, three degrees. But generally, but I think maybe towards end of winter and then early spring, sort of. That will be the most ideal. Because I think Pink Lake. Uh, turns color during winter, I think. You, you have to check out the month. Yeah, uh, that's really true. The Pink Lake, it's, yeah. you know, if you want to really soak in those colors, I think it's more towards summertime. No, or no, winter. Uh, winter time, yeah. sorry. Um, but if you're just looking for the, you know, what the weather is like, I would say I did, you know, throughout the year is pretty nice and pleasant out there. Mm. It doesn't get scorching hot or anything of that sort. So that's our trip report for the Clare Valley visit. From from Clare, we, we went on to the Southern Flinders. So the Southern Flinders trip report will come out in a couple of weeks' time. We put into that together as well. So we hope you found this video useful. If you've got questions, like I said, leave them in the comments below or, or write to us at duncan at overlandjournals.com and we're happy to share information with you. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscription button and the notification bell because we bring out a video every single week. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.